hip hop, yeah. hip hop, hip bars hip. is back, hip hop, Sam hip. and hip hop, oh god, hip. what's hip. up with you guys? Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Oh God, driving Sam and riding passenger side, and you heard it out the mouth of the greatest rapper alive. Hmm. Now I don't say I'm not intimating that's what's here, but I think it's right. best that we all just back off. And what is Obi Wan tell Luke in Star Wars? That one patience is a great virtue. <laughs> absolutely i was thinking that too i'm like you know what if that's not the real story what they're telling us what if he tried to break into his house and like, we don't really know all the details of the story to be you know rushing to judgment i was actually thinking about that but you know the media kind of paints a narrative and then you have which i want to ask you about these people who i call ambulance chasers that run to these uh, hot yeah that yeah. you know what well Put it this way. Mm -hmm. There is this little thing about what you really know versus what people think you know. Now, can you imagine a doctor who went through medical school, but he's never been an intern or a resident, and he's got medical office open and he's treating you, but he's never gone in and had that thing where there are a lot of patients he's had to deal with under supervision. Yes, so he learns his business. Well, toward the end of my time on the bench, the state bench, which has been more than 20 years ago, 22, 23 some years ago, I started noticing that people that got a lot of hype would have eight, nine, 10 clients in my courtroom on a given day but they couldn't go to trial because it was an absolute disaster because they didn't know their way around a jury or a trial because they'd never been in one or had been in very few. Hmm. And that isn't limited to defense or being a plaintiff's lawyer. I remember when I was on a bench, we had a DA that was too, well, the district attorney who got appointed was two and a half hours late to his swearing in. Why? He'd never been to the criminal justice center. They had to go find him and bring him because he didn't know where to go. Wow. But he was the new DA. Uh, we've had judges that I'm familiar with who were sworn into the bar, 30 years old, which was the minimum in the state of Tennessee. And four days after they got sworn into the bar, got sworn in as a superior court judge with unlimited trial jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. so biggest rookie in the courtroom is the judge in charge now you can imagine how big a mess that would cause so it's all endemic across this thing new and improved and forget experience that's an inconvenient thing that doesn't fit the narrative of we all are entitled to get a participation ribbon rather than actually having to compete mm -hmm. it's also got to do with I've wanted to be this since I've been 13. Yeah, but what did you do to prep yourself? Well, I always took courses so they would lead directly there. I didn't want to do something to my GPA and risk being able to get there. Yeah, well, you got there now and you don't know crap. So what's your point? You're useless. Now, one of the things that I would point out, when mm -hmm. somebody's considering what you do, Go back and evaluate what the liability policy was that, say, a uh, city had. Uh, then go back and look at what's been done. Now, black people don't appreciate their expertise in things, but there's a gentleman by the name of Willie Gary. Willie mm -hmm. Gary practices in Florida. Willie Gary is 75 years old this year. Well, he holds the absolute record for the large, largest jury verdict that withstood appeal in American history. And out of the top 10, he's got four of them. Out of the top 10 largest settlements in American history, he's got five or six of them. Mm. So he is one hell of a trial lawyer. 
one hell of a trial lawyer. And in 1981, he got an, a jury verdict for $980 million that stood up on appeal. And when it was in, affirmed in 1983-84, within five years, it had gotten up to a billion and a quarter dollars. And that was in 1985 money. So why does nobody go to him when they have a case that needs to be resolved? But, and then some of the people that I've talked to, I guess you would say consulted with or asked to consult with, and I've talked to them. They aren't even aware of what the law is, but wow. it is what it is. So be careful of running around with hype. And also another thing, we have a problem here in Memphis that raised its head and everybody is asking, what are you going to do about so-and-so? And so I said, well, before you talk about that one, how about the 652 families who've lost somebody in the last 25 months? That's more than just one. And then when I look at that family, I say, okay, they're acting all aggrieved and bringing in everybody from around the country, but they put the boy up for adoption and he got adopted by a couple when he was six years old out in Los Angeles and got encouraged to come back to Memphis to meet his biological family and he died and the biological family they cut the family that actually raised him all raised him up off from everything and they're after the money so yeah mm. be careful yes sir before you hire anybody ask how many trials they've had mm. that brings and up a lot of these people you would have they haven't that's how many they've had goose mm. egg Whew. wow so be careful that brings up another um, question I would like to ask. And my cousin brought it up actually before we started the show. And you also kind of just um, highlighted it. Out of all the murders that occur in this country, and we there's plenty of them on all kind of levels. How are certain ones picked and put into the media and put into our face over others? Do you have any idea on how that's... And it's Tuesday selected? at 1.17 p.m., Everybody's out to lunch and you got a 21 year old, 22 year old who's sitting in the newsroom and he's going through uh, his emails and he decides to check a net and there's an interesting case. He puts it on. Uh, somebody else does the work up. The on air person sits in front of the camera. He's not seen it. And he's there and this afternoon in so-and-so, we had an interesting situation and he reads what's going down and he's well-versed in Mac C45 or something, makeup, it's my makeup on, you know, as the dirt on right, you know, yeah. is it, are his eyebrows properly arched and all that crap. And he reads what scrolls across the scene, you, the screen. You can't see it because the camera looks right through it the other direction. So he looks like he's looking right at you and he's reading uh, the scrolling script that goes right across the lens. So he reads that. He doesn't know anything about it. He knows in nothing about the subject. If he showed up to try and report on the scene, what's going on? What's this? I don't understand. You know, explain it. Well, you showed up. Don't you know anything about the subject? No. He knows his makeup or she knows her makeup and that's about it. And somebody sees it and it picks up and it's a slow nose day and it becomes the thing. And there might be three or 400 more cases very close to that that occur around the country, but nobody hears about them because that's the ball that got rolling first. Mm. Copy that. And half the time they get it wrong because they don't even understand the fine new ones. Like we've got a thing right here. They're going to DC to demonstrate because the United States won't prosecute somebody for killing somebody in Mexico. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, first thing, 
that if you're going to report on this, have some idea of how things work. One of the first things and the principal thing that has to be established, uh, I'll give you a jury charge. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there are certain elements of this crime that have to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. One of the most important is you must be able to answer this question. Did this offense that is alleged and for which you have heard evidence during the course of this trial occur in this county or in this district before the return of the indictment? Now, did it occur in North Carolina? Did it occur in the county where they're going to try it or the district if there's more than one county in the district? Are they going to be able to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt? And then the other thing is, is did it occur on a federal enclave? Did it occur at an embassy, a consulate, a military base? Well, if that's not the case, the feds don't have any jurisdiction anyway. The Mexicans do. They've apparently issued a warrant, but they have not yet requested extradition. So the United States does not have under its law any jurisdiction to do a damn thing to anybody unless they can prove beyond a reasonable doubt or have the proof that would likely produce that were convincing to a jury that the crime either occurred or originated in the state or in the county in question. So you just can't say somewhere in the state. You have to say in this county or in the district of this court it occurred. Now, I say district because in the South, a lot of districts might have two or three counties in them. So you have to show before you can get anywhere that this occurred in this district, physically occurred or somebody originated the crime and it started there and it spilled over someplace. Not it just happened and everybody came from there. That's not enough. So why doesn't the press put that out there and, and enlighten the public instead of blathering on and you get everybody talking about they did our daughter wrong. Well, okay, yeah, wrong. But the other thing too, we live in the United States of America and we like to badmouth it, but I can tell you uh, most of the rest of the places in the world are like this. I'll give you an example mm -hmm. quickly. Yes, sir. A lot of people would love to go to Paris, right? Or visit France. All the black folk that got jacked around in America back in the 20th century, they went to France. Well, in France, the gendarme will probably look the other way when an American cop might vamp on you. But if the gendarme arrest you, you are presumed guilty until you prove wow. yourself innocent. Wow. In America, you're presumed innocent until you prove your or until you're proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So just imagine if the cops busted you, you had to prove yourself innocent. Mm. But that's France and everybody loves France. You know, hey man, I went to Paris, man. <laughs> we were at the Eiffel Tower, man, and we were drinking some wine, man, and it was cool, man. Yeah, great. But you see, it's like that. Mm. Right. Now, I have a question about the, the, old, the Mexican situation with the young lady. Um, can a, can America, I was I was listening to someone, they said that they could, that they could prosecute for somebody killing someone abroad. But only if that's no, true. No, they can't. They no. can't. Okay, so it's not true. Okay. No, it's not. The only way they can do that is if it was on a military base or a consulate um, or an embassy, if it's American soil, so to speak. Okay. If it originated in the United States, then it's up to that state to prosecute because that would be the origin of the crime. Now, there might be something to develop where. Uh, parties conspired to lure somebody abroad and kill them while they were out of the country and dispose mm -hmm. of the body. But that crime started in a state. You just can't say somewhere in the United States this crime started because U.S. government doesn't have jurisdiction over that. 
you have to say it arose in a certain state and prove that beyond a reasonable doubt to even get personal jurisdiction over the crime. And if it originated, they planned it, plotted it, was carried out elsewhere, well, that would establish a connection, but they don't seem to have that kind of proof. And the other problem that would probably prevent it is the only way they could get that proof is if somebody told on themselves, and what do we have to prevent that? Fifth mm. Amendment, you have mm. a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used in evidence against you. You have a right to an attorney. If you do not wish to continue, you may stop and secure services of counsel. If you're unable to afford one, one will be appointed to represent you. See, all of that goes in there. So when the press gets to hyping stuff up, it might not have anything to do with the law. And then see, in America, there's this thing called the perfect crime where they can't prove it. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, well, is it? How many of uh, the people listening in bet on the Super Bowl game or went to a Super Bowl party where there was a pool on who was going to score what by what quarter? Well, in most states, that's illegal. That's a crime. But you can get away with it because it's not sufficiently egregious as to bring it to the public peace, dignity, and disorder level. And it's not brought to the notice of the public. And unless they have a search warrant, they can't go in so you can get away with it. Murder? Murder is one of the easiest crimes in America to get away with. That's why they have these, what is it, first 48 hours? Mm -hmm. You don't solve the crime in 48 hours, probability of solving it drops way down. Why? Because the witness is dead. That goes to the other thing, the standing of a victim. Victim technically has no standing in a criminal case other than what he might serve as a utility factor by being a witness. And, well, they don't want to prosecute. Well, that really doesn't have anything to do with it because quite often, maybe if it's looked at as somebody want to, we want to get to, the DA comes in and says, we want him, this person taken into custody as a material witness. So since they don't have any jeopardy and they can be compelled to testify and they stay in jail until they testify or until they make what is known as, quote, a material witness bond, unquote. And... and Really, in a criminal case, the victim is just the best witness to the offense of doing something against the public peace, dignity, and order of the state. Now, in any one of the 50 states you go to, or the United States, if it's a federal mm -hmm. offense, the indictment is going to say on or about such and such date, John Doe did, quote, against the public peace, dignity, and the order of the state of Wyoming commit the following act. It's an allegation. It's not proof. It's just an allegation, and the state has to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt. So can anybody do that, you see? And if the victim is aggrieved and he wants to go pop a cap on somebody for revenge, that's why we have a civil action. So if the person right. thinks they can prove it, they can file a civil action against the person that gives them grief. And in this case, all of these ambulance chasing lawyers that are hot on trying to get a settlement from somebody, why don't mm -hmm. they advise them? Well, you know, you can sue these people for wrongful death if you can acquire the proof. But then again, even if you get a judgment against them, you up. might not get anything out of it because they might be what you call judgment proof. In other words, even if you establish the liability and get a damage figure, they've got no income, no property mm -hmm. worth that. So you just spend a lot of money for a period victory. In other words, I proved my point. I'm right. But what do you get? Dollar damages or 150,000 or 200,000, but they're broke. So you don't get anything. Yeah.